Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hey, you there. Do you like space horror? How about battling corporate evil in a post-climate change future? Why not add a huge dollop of spies, telepaths, and more sci-fi horror than you can shake an ice moon at? And pick up Last Light, the first episode of the epic new pulp sci-fi series, The Sunset Chronicles. Horror supremo Steve Stred said of the first season of The Sunset Chronicles, Stevenson writes the characters lean and true, making for some fantastically done action sequences, all the while retaining that claustrophobic feeling you need with outer space based books. I had a blast and I think you will too. So, if you like pulse quickening action, blood soaked science fiction, revelations, and revolutions, you'll love this first episode in Paul Stevenson's Sunset Chronicles, the new monthly sci-fi horror serial from the author of the best-selling Blood on the Motorway Saga. Pick up the first episode for free at all good bookstores, and the evil ones too. Many thanks to Paul Stevenson for sponsoring this episode. Now on to the review. Okay, so today we are talking about The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic cover, and I way, love the way it ties into the book, especially this zero, we'll call it here, or this circle. Um, I hope that was intended. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, there is... I mentioned the zero because it's mentioned the number zero and its validity is mentioned many times throughout the book so I, I'm thinking that was important here I don't know I'll have to ask Caitlin uh, just to let you know I consider the author a friend but uh, anyone who knows me knows that I am far more critical of my friends than I am strangers so I don't feel that that, ha that has made any bias here formed any bias however you want to say it um, I'm huge fan of The Luminous Dead, her first novel, and I love the novella um, Yellow Jessamine, which both I've reviewed here on the channel. Uh, this one, I went out and bought this brand new um, from Books A Million, paid full price for it. I don't even have a discount card. As soon as I saw it, I knew I had to grab it to support her, um, her work. Uh, absolutely fantastic author and a great human being. Uh, she signed with St. Martin's Press for this book, so it's it's a it's a pretty big deal. Um, I believe uh, I can't remember who did the the first Luminous Dead wasn't a small press, but I think Yellow Jessamine was. And Yellow Jessamine is a beautiful book. I have it packed away. Um, it was one of my both books were on my uh, best of list for 2020. Um, even though I read uh, Luminous Dead early, early in the year. But anyways, let's talk about the book. This book follows Jane Lawrence, who reminds me so much of my friend Sarah Frost. Sarah, if you happen to see this, I, I think you'd love this. Um, the character is very analytical, very straightforward, uh, honest to a fault, uh, an amazingly in-depth portrait of this woman and her idiosyncrasies. Um, she ends up meeting a man and they get married, even though it is alluded to that he might not be uh, in interested. It's not really alluded to that he's not interested in uh, consummating the marriage. Um, he's not interested in them living together. He's going to stay at a place called Lindridge Hall. while And the man's a doctor. Um, and his name's Augustine, by the way. Um, and August, well, Jane is going to be sleeping at the surgery that Augustine runs. And he spends every night at Lindridge Hall. There's a reason for all of this. In fact, that was my favorite part of the book, is finding out the little reasons um, for everything, everything that's going on with him, everything he does, um, and how uh, Jane's uh, idiosyncrasies, like I said, tie into the development of the book. And z the number zero, and its validity, as I said, is a very important theme of the book. Uh, this, I, this is the first gothic romance, I guess I'm going to call it that, the first gothic romance I have ever head over, head over heels fallen in love with. Now I call it a, a gothic romance because there, it is a gothic setting, it, there is romance, but stuff actually happens. And I think that's the most important thing for me. Um, yeah, you guys know I look for character pacing and dread. I loved every single character in the story. They all suited a purpose. I hope I'm going to say this right, but I especially love Dr. Nazamiev. 
Um, this is also an alternate, I guess, alternate reality, um, because instead of Britain, um, the place is called Breltane, and instead of Russia, it's uh, Ruskin. Um, so there's there's little little things like that. Um, none of the places actually exist. Uh, but the the most fascinating part here is the stuff that does actually happen. The stuff that keeps you turning the pages. I first picked up the book just to uh, just to check it out um, when I got it home uh, from my shopping trip, and I just wanted to read the first page, see what the writing was like, and all of a sudden I was 16 pages deep. Um, I just had to read it. Uh, even though I didn't really have time to fit it in, I'm super glad that I did. It's one of the, my favorite reads of the year, and I think it is Starling's best work. Um, it is, okay, so here's my pitch for you. It has magic, it has ghosts, it has creatures, it has blood, it has gore, it has action. It This book has everything. It, I don't care what genre you enjoy, science fiction, fantasy, horror, romance, it has everything. And all of Caitlin's books have, have had that. Uh, but this one especially, I think, like I said, it, it's her best work. Um, I, I am so glad that she found a publisher for this one, you know, a, a big, a big publisher that was willing to do a hardcover because the book is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it's just, just beautiful. And I almost didn't want to, to read this copy because it was so nice. I almost got the ebook, but I probably wouldn't finish the ebook. Y'all know I don't like that format. But anyways, um, I blew through this book. I was reading anywhere from 50 to 70 pages a day, and that's a lot for me. I know it seems like I read a lot faster and a lot more than I do, but really, you know, I, I don't. Um, I just have a lot of time during the day. I was reading Tim Meyer's... Uh, Malignant summer, summer along with that. I was doing two, uh, 20 pages a day um, just to get, you know, and but anyways, let, let me not talk about that book. That review is coming soon. Probably Friday. I don't know when this one is going up, but this is the last week. I only have a few more videos to shoot. Um, anywho, so this, this book, I really, really do hope it finds love and finds a home in all of your guys' hearts and your bookshelves. I, I feel this, is, this, this book is special. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. Um, I was intrigued and engaged and fascinated the entire way through, and that just happens so rarely for me nowadays. You know, it might happen maybe maybe five times a year at most, but with this one, man, it, it kept me locked in, and I absolutely loved it. Will it be my number one for the year? Who knows? I still have some other books to get through, but right now, it's way, way up there. But have you read The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling? If you have, let me know down there in the doobly-doo whether or not you loved it, whether or not you hated it, whether or not you felt meh about it, especially if you hated it. I would love to talk to someone who who did not like this book, and I, I because I want to know why. I can't. I couldn't find any faults, and maybe you did. But uh, yeah, that's everything. Leave your comments down there. Let me know what you thought of the book. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another episode of Thirty One Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.